Hello everyone, welcome to our channel Ask Prep. In today's series on 11th grade physics, we will be studying chapter 9, Mechanical Properties of Solids, in detail, let's start the video. Starting with what is intermolecular force? In a solid, atoms and molecules are arranged in such a way that each molecule is acted upon by the forces due to the neighboring molecules. These forces are known as intermolecular forces. Next is elasticity. The property of a body to regain its original configuration, length, volume, or shape, when the deforming forces are removed is called elasticity. What is stress? Stress is defined as the ratio of the internal force F, produced when a substance is deformed, to the area A over which this force acts. In equilibrium, this force is equal in magnitude to the externally applied force. Stress is of two types. 1. Normal stress. It is defined as the restoring force per unit area perpendicular to the surface of the body. Normal stress is of two types, tensile stress and compressive stress. 2. Tangential stress. When the elastic restoring force or deforming force acts parallel to the surface area, the stress is called tangential stress. Next up perfectly elastic body. A body which regains its original configuration immediately and completely after the removal of deforming force from it, is called perfectly elastic body. Quartz and phosphor bronze are the examples of nearly perfectly elastic bodies. What is plasticity? The inability of a body to return to its original size and shape even after the removal of the deforming force is called plasticity, and such a body is called a plastic body. Simply put, Hooke's law basically tells us how far an elastic material will stretch depending on the tension or force applied to it. It is a common law used in physics and engineering. Have you ever wanted to go bungee jumping? How reassured would you feel that the rope attached to your feet would not stretch too far, causing you to hit the ground at 100 km per hour? After the cord passes the point of free fall, it acts as a spring and so falls under the rules of Hooke's law. Through Hooke's law, designers are able to calculate the length of rope will stretch based on the weight of the person attached to it so that the elastic stop stretching before reaching the ground. Hooke's law is named after Robert Hooke, a 17th century British physicist who first stated this law in 1660. So how can we set out to prove this law of ourselves? We will now set out to prove Hooke's law by experimentation on the spring and its length when differentiation forces are applied to it. We expect our result to show that the stretch on the spring is directly proportional to the force applied. So if the stretch is x and the force is f, then 2x should equal 2f. Apparatus that you will need include a spring, weight, swing, scales, a ruler, a retort stand and clamps. First, set up the apparatus shown. Measure the length of the spring in its natural state before any force is applied, then making sure you weigh the weight first place, one on the end of the spring. Give the spring time to settle and again take the note of the new length. Also take note of the weight to apply to it. Now add another weight and repeat the previous step of measuring the new length and weight on the spring. Repeat this until you have a table of results. The more results the better. The table of results will contain 5 columns. The first two will be the length of the spring before any force is applied and the new length afterwards and both will be measured in meters. The next will be the total stretch of the spring in meters. The next will be the mass applied to the spring and the final column will be the force applied and will be measured in newtons. F equals ma is the formula used in physics to determine the strength of a force. F stands for force and is measured in newtons, M stands for mass and is measured in kilograms and A stands for acceleration and is measured in meters per second square. In the case of Hooke's law, acceleration will be gravity 9.8 meters per second squared. Some precautions you will need to take include clamping the stand to the table so that it does not fall over. Use in a force that the spring stretch is a measurable distance but not so much that its elastic limit is exceeded and becomes permanently stretched and damaged. On the graph plot, the line of force compared to land force is on the y-axis and displacement is on the x-axis. This line should be a straight line through the origin of the graph. When the line starts to curve or misshape, the elastic limit of the spring has been exceeded. This means that the spring has stretched too far and has become disformed and thus no longer follows the rules of Hooke's. Next is Young's modulus. 
For a solid in the form of a wire or a thin rod, Young's modulus of elasticity within the elastic limit is defined as the ratio of longitudinal stress to longitudinal strain. Bulk modulus Within the elastic limit, the bulk modulus is defined as the ratio of longitudinal stress to volumetric strain. The reciprocal of the bulk modulus is commonly referred to as compressibility. It is defined as the fractional change in volume per unit change in pressure. Thank you for watching. We will be dropping notes in the description of this video. If you found this video helpful, kindly like, subscribe, and share. See you in the next video. All the best for your exams.